Hi there, welcome back to the Playwright and TypeScript course. So in this video we will talk more about the troubleshooting itself, because those are things which take in the most time and the most frustrating once you're developing your framework. So let's pre let us previously uh, just copy paste this file and we would rename this to workshop 10. And we would actually need this file, but just rename it. 10.spec, perfect. And we would de delete the code, which will which will be actually not needed for now. So once you interact with your elements, as I already told you before, there is multiple ways of how to actually get the selector. And one of them I was showing you is a debug tool and to actually pick the locator from there. Let's actually do it again. Interact with elements. And we would go to To some page and let's actually pick the playwright demo page so we will run only this test let's find out where is our command let's run it into the back mode So as you can see, as before, the playwright providing its own playwright inspector. And let's actually go to the next step. Let's actually see the possibilities, how we can get it and summarize it in this video. So the most common one is the data test ID. Uh, so I would suggest to use it as especially prepared for testing purposes. And we are easily can get it via this. We can also provide the full pass like XPath. Uh, and also we can copy the, uh, the selector from here, which would be possible from right there. And you can see that XPath is kind of the long way to do, and the uh, XPath could be also changed for some time. We can also copy the full XPath. So you can see no much difference, but still, that should be the full one. And also there could possibility to copy the selector. That would like that, that would look like that. And this is the thing we are using more now. So previously we, we were using some uh, selector P with the uh, ID and uh, But another thing I really like about the playwright is that we can actually record our test. So let's actually add the list presenter with milk x and then click done, make it smaller and click completed, clear completed. Also let's go to completed. And you can see that Playwright actually wrote a lot for us and you can you can use it without no problem. There's the full test passed like Chromium launch. So only this test will be performed only in Chromium. But what is interesting for us is this. So you can easily start using the tests are generated by Playwright, but those won't be uh, really much structured and uh, won't allow you to use the page object model. But because, but as for me, I really like this feature because you can write your boilerplate and then you will know what to follow there. All right. Also, in the meantime, when the Playwright version 140 was released, there was another crucial functionality was added. It's called assertions. And then, uh, so as for now, you also have possibility to assert elements within the code gen, UI mode or debug mode. Highly recommend to try it. There is another cool feature about Playwright is a screenshot taken because you not always can read from the pipeline why actual test is failing, but the screenshot would help you. Also, there is possibility in the Playwright to record video, but also be sure that it's taking a lot of space here. Let's actually create the test. And add a skip here only and call it screenshot. So 
so on we will return the test and then we want to copy this part and also pass the page argument so the screenshot will be really helpful when your once your test is failing and uh, in such cases um, the play rate method page screenshot is useful but in this case let's actually provide the screenshot of the real application put the uh, path to it and give it a name right let's call it fail.png okay let's let's run this test so and also in this case we will run the test without headed mod but the playwright would still take the screenshot for you all right and you can see that the actual screenshot is appeared here perfect and also there is a possibility because we don't want to put the screenshot for every test we need the screenshot once the test failed because once the test passed is this mean that everything all right uh, so to do this we can do the next thing right in here in use method for a play right we can actually we can actually set the option to do the screenshot but only on failure so you can off it on and put the only on failure so that once your test fail you will you will get your screenshot right let's keep it as it is another thing with the playwright but also with all the testing frameworks that your tests actually can ensure that your test actually can ensure uh flackiness for some time what does flackiness mean that your test is failing from some time to time and you have no idea about it's why it's failing because you go to your local machine and run it you run it on ci and this is passing but day after day you can see that this test is keep failing for some reason so there might be a lot of problems why this test is actually failing this might be the uh, ci issue it might be the local issue this might be the uh, some um, third party application so always make sure uh, to find out why the test actually fail and do your best to actually avoid the flaky test let's actually execute some flaky test and we will call it flaky page and then what we would need is actually again go to our application and um, call this flaky and what we want to do here to to get actually the number is not always the same so we can do the mass random and put it in less than 0 five so and we would say if is fl if flaky then then we actually uh, need to await page wait for timeout for example and this will be 1000 milliseconds and in this case we would go to click non-existent selector and call it non-existing selector give it a class all right so when it's not flaky then we just will have our test passed but of course in your test you won't have the math random function maybe for some cases but uh, always keep eye on the data you're passing if your data is randomly generated keep an eye uh, on uh, the mm, additional symbols or something so always make sure that uh, your data is validated run the test so far it's passing let's wait for some time until the this will be resolved all right so you can see that we cannot actually click on the element for these cases for these cases the playwright is a little handful because he's always showing the step where our test was failed also the often situation in, in a web testing that uh, your company using some proxy level and this one allow you to get into some 
URL or get some data from third-party application. For this case, the playwright is offering this uh, page on method. So you remember th that we are, were using this page on method on uh, some alerts and pop-ups. But as for now, there is also possibility to use the page on and, for example, get the response from or request from the application where you want to get your data from. This would return. And so you can easily debug it because this is another this is another way to handle the flackiness. Because for example, your test can work locally, but on CI, uh, you cannot get some resource. So you would be perfectly know what kind of resource it is. So and in our case, for example, you can add your some console message and say that, for example, some response dot URL. All right, let's skip this. And as previously, let's commit the code. Cool. So as for now, you know how to avoid the flaky test and how to handle if you have so. So there is also the multiply ways to uh, make your life easier with the playwright. Uh, a lot of methods are described in the in their documentation. So don't hesitate to go there. See you in the next one.